Now the nitty gritty. First, this will be the first uh, section where we start to use the calculator. So if you haven't got yourself a calculator yet, now's the time. You're gonna need one to do the homework. You're gonna need one to take the exam. Uh, the homework, the calculator that I'm gonna teach in this class, again, as I mentioned uh, in, the first, uh, in our first meeting, is the BA2+, plus, the TI BA2+, plus. it's a financial calculator. Again, this is not your standard scientific calculator. It needs the special uh, financial functions and financial buttons here uh, that are highlighted in gray. Uh, so please pick up one. Uh, you are welcome to use any calculator you want that has financial functions, that's all it needs. So all of the TI graphing calculators have financial functions. Uh, I'm sure the HP ones do too. If you wanna use those, that's fine. The only reason I encourage this calculator is because it's the one that I really know how to use. I, I can help a little bit with problems with the graphing calculators, but I am by no means an expert on the graphing calculators. Uh, and so if you are having trouble, uh, your best option with a graphing calculator is YouTube. Now again, recall from the, our, our first meeting that uh, the, uh, there, are help, there are calculator help guides on the As You Learn page all the way at the bottom. The, the ones for, there's one for the BA2+, plus, there's ones for both uh, the TI-84 and the 86, and they have distinct instructions on how to get to the uh, financial functions, how to use them, button presses, the things like that, they're very thorough, okay? So please make use of all those uh, if you choose to use a calculator other than the one that I'm gonna show you how to use and all the example videos. Now, the two fundamental sides of the time value of money and you have seen this in, in the game that we just played. Uh, the, in the game, you were given two different choices between some amount of money today, which is what we call the present value, and between some amount of money in the future, which is what we call, obviously, the future value. Again, finance naming, not super clever. Okay? So these are the two sides of the coin, the two distinct points of tension in time value of money. Uh, problems. And the future value is about, um, is about something that we will receive. So it's about our expectation of making some investment or uh, saving money or saving for retirement or receiving a payout or investing in a new project and hoping that we get money in the future. All of those things represent future value and they're all defined by the fact that our expectation about the future is not ever gonna be that correct. And so when we think about future value problem, we are asking questions as simple as, what is the value of $100 that we put in a savings account five years in the future, 10 years in the future, 30 years in the future, right? So one of the really important, the, the other important uh, inputs to a problem uh, with time value money problem that are gonna help us answer those kinds of questions are, what's the rate that we're gonna earn? In other words, how is that money going to change? If I stick $100 under my mattress and pull it out one year in the future, nothing happens. It's still $100, right? My mattress did not magically change it into $105. If I wait five years, still nothing happens. If I wait 30 years, still nothing happens. Although with the caveat that if I wait 30 years, inflation, which is the devaluing of money over time, means that the $100 I, bought, I pull out of my mattress isn't gonna buy the same thing, the same amount of goods that $100 would today. That's what inflation means. So not only did my $100 not magically change into something else, it actually got worth less, right? So there is an important aspect when we talk about the time value of money, and that aspect is that we have to do something with that money in order for it to change. Right? We have to invest it, we have to save it, we have to put it into some kind of account. If we're a firm, we have to make investments in the firm, we have to take on new projects, we have to do things, okay? Uh, so when we're talking about the future value of something, we're saying, if I start with some amount of money and I put it into a savings account, let's say I take $100, and I invest it into a savings account and that savings account pays 1%. And that means in one year, I'll have $101. And in five years, I'll have $106. And in 30 years, I'll have like $140. Because that money will grow at the rate of 1% every year. Right? So that amount that we'll have at the end of this investment, that's the future value. That's how we judge our investments. 
That's how we think about what we're going to get in the future. Now, the flip side of the coin is the present value of some amount. Okay, so present value and future value are tied together in the sense that we don't have a future value of an investment without starting with a present value of an investment. And it's just like looking at the different options that are available. So, for instance, when we're talking about future value, we're talking about what might happen in the future given something that we've done today. But when we're talking about present value, what we're interested in is what do I need to start with today in order to get to some uh, hopeful or imaginary point in the future? All right. So present value is perhaps a more realistic uh, look in the, at the world because it starts with something that we know, which is, for instance, how much money I have to make an investment right now, and then tries to arrive at potential future outcomes. Right? So what happens if I take $1,000 today and I put it under my mattress? What happens in a year? Well, again, we've talked about it. I pull $1,000 out, nothing happened right? because I didn't make an investment. I just stuffed the money under my mattress. Then what happens if I take that $1,000 and I invest it in that savings account for 1%? <clears throat> well, in a year, that $1,000 turns into $1,010. It grew by 1%. But what present value problems allow us to think about is, what if I, for instance, needed a million dollars to retire? That's how much I've calculated that I can, I can live on. So the, at whatever point I have a million dollars, I can retire. Well, present value allows us to talk about the idea of what do I need to do right now in order to get to the place where I have a million dollars and I can retire. Right? And businesses use it a lot because they wanna know, for instance, if I need to, if I want to start a new business, if I want to start a new product line, if I want to make a new investment, buy a new factory, all of those things. And my goal is to increase revenue by $100,000 a year. What is the present value of that investment? What is the level of cost of investment that it's going to take for me to achieve those goals in the future? So it turns out that present value is going to be the, the lens through which we look at most of the problems in business because we wanna know what we need to do now in order to hopefully arrive at some, some beneficial point in the future. But it's also something that we use a lot in our personal lives. For instance, this is the kind of calculation that you're gonna be talking about. I mean, I already mentioned it, but if you ever wanna retire, this is the kind of things that you're gonna be thinking about. First, how much money do I need when I retire? Second, what do I need to do now in order to reach that goal? Okay. Now, you can see that, uh, although we haven't looked at the formula yet, there are four really important pieces to the, the time value of money uh, concept. The first is the present value. This is what do I start with in any investment uh, or any, any project that I'm gonna undertake. The second is, what is the rate of that investment? In other words, I, it, the rate of me stuffing money under my mattress is zero. The rate of that savings account is 1%. If I make an investment in the stock market, perhaps I'm hoping to make 8 or 9% on my money. If a business takes a really, really risky moonshot, uh, then perhaps they're hoping to make 15 or 20% on their investment. But the rate is what determines how we move from what we start with to what we hope to get in the future. And the other thing that determines that is what we call N, the number of periods in which the investment exists. So that means that we need to be really conscious of the fact of how long we have to get to where we want to go, because that's going to determine in part how, what the level of investment needs to be and what the rate we can earn uh, in order to get to where we're going. And then finally, the future value is where we want to get it, where, where we want to end up. Future value is how much I need to stop uh, in my retirement account in order to retire. It's uh, how much money we uh, our goal is for starting this new project. It's any number of things, but it's where we're going, right? So present value is where we start and future value is where we're going. The, the rate and the number of periods, they tell us how we get there. And, and now that we can see these inputs, we can take a look at the formula, okay? So here's the formula for future value. It says that the future value of some amount is equal to the present value times one plus i, where i is the rate that we're gonna earn. 
Now here, it's usually written as I because people often say interest rate, but it's not always interest rate. In fact, what we'll usually call it in this class is the required rate of return. Interest rate is specifically for certain types of investments like loans, um, but all kinds of investments earn a rate of return. And then all of that raised to the end, the number of periods that the investment exists. Okay, so uh, I think the easiest way to, uh, to not be scared of the formula and to uh, understand what's going on here is just to work some examples. So the, the way we'll work this lecture is uh, we're gonna work a ton of examples. You, you'll see there's a ton of example videos. Uh, in the first couple of example videos, we'll use the formula. So for these two example problems here, we'll use the formula uh, to solve for it. Then we'll move on and we'll start using the calculator. We'll do that for future value. We'll do that for present value. And then we'll talk about how to solve for the other portions of uh, the formula here for, for the rate and for the number of periods. So uh, you can see the, the card up here, the, the notification. You can jump right over and watch the video. I really encourage you to do it. Just pause it, jump over, watch the example video, uh, work out the example problems. That's really going to help your understanding uh, before you move forward with this video. Okay.